"'Twas the week before Christmas, and all through the house was nary a sound. Except for tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now this week is the week before Christmas, so we're going to talk about something extra Christmassy. And today we're going to talk about Christmas portraits, how you can get that really Christmassy vibe to portraits, different tricks and things you can do with lighting to really kind of maximize the Christmas feel, and just a few different things, framing, lighting, getting creative, the types of lenses you can use. Let's just let's just dive straight into it. So the first one we're going to talk about is lighting. Now obviously with a Christmas portrait, you can do it indoors, near something like your Christmas tree, or with fairy lights and things like that, or you can do it outdoors. There's loads of Christmas stuff up this time of year, especially if you go into some of the bigger towns. There's loads of nice Christmas lights, there's often Christmas trees dotted all over the place, and you can get some really nice portraits by kind of using those in your photos. So if you're going to go out and take photos, normally with portraits, I'd recommend doing it you know, afternoon, sunset kind of time, but actually, when you're doing Christmas portraits, it can be worth leaving it till it's a little bit darker. Because if you can get enough ambient light from, from lights around the place, it can look extra Christmassy. It can look really, really nice. Now, we did a whole video on low light photography tips, which, uh, which you can watch. I'll pop a link down in the description so you can actually go and check that whole video out. But essentially, if you want to go stand near a Christmas tree or near some amazing Christmas lights, if it's a little bit darker, those lights are going to be extra, extra visible in the photo. You know, in the middle of the day or even just in the afternoon when it's, when it's kind of the sun's a little bit lower in the sky, the lights are going to be less visible because there's just more natural light around. So they're, they're less punchy. They don't punch through in the photo. So if you are out and you want to take some portraits near some, some Christmassy lights, it might be worth waiting to a little bit later in the day. It does mean you do have to find ambient light around you to be able to light your subject uh, or bring a little light with you maybe. But to be honest, most city places where you're going to find these lights are going to have nicer lights around as well. And some Sometimes you can even use the Christmassy lights to kind of light your subject. Now, if you're shooting a portrait indoors, if you want to kind of maximize a nice Christmas vibe inside, there's a few different things you can do. Now, I love using a one light setup. Again, we've got a whole video we just did, I think last week, all about a one light setup for portraits. There's loads of different ways you can light your subject. Now, I tend to just go one light, so I'll pop a link to that video as well down in the description so you can check that out. But essentially, if you use one light to light your subject, you can get some really nice looks. And if you then also use Christmassy lights as well, you can get some some really nice kind of color contrast. So if you've got a white light, like I've got a white light shining on me right now, which illuminates me really nicely. But if I had Christmassy lights and things like that, it can give a slightly warmer glow onto me as well, which can look really, really nice. Now, of course, shooting near the tree or shooting near some of these Christmas lights inside your home can create some really, really nice bokeh. That's a really great opportunity to kind of get that, get those lights bokehed out in the background. They look amazing. But something else which is particularly nice, which I really like to do, and it's so, so easy, is to literally just dangle some fairy lights in front of your camera while you're taking the photo. It sounds a bit counterintuitive, but because they're so close to the lens, they just are completely blurred out and they just give a slightly warm feel. You know, you get these little bits of light around the lens. It looks really, really nice. It's very, very easy to do. I was using battery powered fairy lights, but you could easily use plug-in ones as well. And you literally just hold them just in front of your lens. So for example, if I'm using this camera, I've got the 85 millimeter F1.4, so it's gonna be very nice and bogalicious, you know? I could dangle the lights right in front of the lens here as I'm taking the portrait and get a really, really nice, really, really nice Christmassy feel photo. Now that's lighting kind of taken care of, but let's talk a little bit about backgrounds, because I think that's really important in portrait photography. And obviously you could use a really fast aperture, so something like f1.4, like in the 85 millimeter there, and you're gonna just blur out the background, but I still think it's really important to get the right kind of background for your Christmassy portrait. So for example, if you're out and about, if you're doing a, a nice portrait outside, you want to make sure you have your background feeling a little bit festive as well. So whether that is using a big Christmas tree in the background or or some of the Christmas lights in the background, because obviously if they're in the background, they are going to bokeh out a little bit and, and you can get those nice bokeh light balls, which look amazing. But if you've got a bland background or if you've got something that's not so exciting or, or doesn't look so good, 
that's not gonna work so well for a Christmas portrait. Now, obviously, there's not always gonna be something around for you to use, but I find that even just a splash of color can really help. When you're indoors and shooting, you can be probably a little bit more mindful of your background. So again, you probably don't want your background to just be some messy room or something like that. You might wanna use the tree as the background, or you might wanna use just nice lights, nice fairy lights. So I actually stuck fairy lights up onto the ceiling with blue tank, and it created this nice kind of bokeh light effect in the background, which just looks really, really nice. Of course, you can do the same thing I was just talking about before, about holding the lights in front of the camera. That can actually create enough of a foreground element that it kind of minimizes any issues you might have with your background. So if you don't have as much of an exciting background, using those lights in the foreground can kind of sort your problem out completely. Now let's talk about getting creative with your lighting. So for example, you can just have the standard fairy lights in front, fairy lights in the back. That looks really, really good. But what about if you start changing things up a little bit? What about if you, if you get your subject to actually hold the fairy lights under her face? And then that glow is gonna shine up onto her face. I'm a big, big fan of this because I just I just think it looks really good. You can have it where she's looking down at the lights. You can have you can have it just under and she's looking into the camera. There's loads and loads of stuff that you can do to get a little bit more creative. So for example, I had some other Christmas lights off to one side of my subject here. So she's just standing there, we've got the tree, we've got the fairy lights, and then I've got some other Christmas lights, which are a little bit brighter, off to one side, shining onto the other side of her face, onto her head. And it almost acts a little bit like a hair light, almost just, just gives a bit of color to one side of her, of her head, which I think makes a big difference. I think it makes enough of a difference that I'm really glad I set it up that way. And that's just using just Christmas lights to actually create uh, a, a, another light source to shine onto my subject. And it took me no more than five minutes to set the whole thing up. But that's definitely worth experimenting with, is, is kind of placing lights in different places to get some really cool effects, get some really cool portraits. It definitely gives it a very Christmassy vibe, especially when you get fairy lights, the light, and then maybe another light coming in, but maybe it's a slightly different temperature, maybe it's a warmer glow coming in this way. And then finally, let's talk about lens choice. So I think it probably goes without saying that I would generally recommend using a faster lens if possible. So I've been using the 85 f1.4, the G Master lens, which is really, really lovely it gives me probably my favorite focal range to work with i just really like shooting 85 millimeter it means i can control my background really easily with an 85 mil as well because you know i can you get a bit of that compression and it just works really really well f1.4 of course is great for getting those nice bokeh light balls which works so well but it also helps with like i mentioned earlier if you are shooting in slightly lower light conditions it's definitely gonna help with that. It makes a big difference if you're out and about and you wanna take some Christmassy portraits, F1.4 is gonna make a huge difference over even like F2.8 or, or F4, certainly. Now, of course, you could go for something like the, the Nifty 50, so 50 millimeter F1.8. I've always been really happy with any results I get from, even though it's a cheap lens, a 50 millimeter F1.8 can work so, so well. So it doesn't have to be some big budget lens. It can be one of the cheaper options, but just a faster aperture is going to help. It's going to help with low light. It's going to help with getting that nice bokeh. It's going to help a little bit with the background as well. It's going to blur out those backgrounds a little bit, which is always helpful. And it's just a nice Christmassy feel. You know, that shallow depth of field, that's going to give you a nice Christmassy vibe. So those are some tips on how to capture some lovely Christmas portraits. If you have any tips of your own, because we've really just gone through five little bits there. If you have any tips of your own, pop them down in the comments below. If you have any questions as well, pop them down there as well. As always, I'll pop a full list of all the kit we use for these photos down in the description so you can check that out for yourself. Make sure to subscribe and like the video and all that kind of cool stuff. If you enjoyed this video, there's new videos every day through to the 24th. How many more is that now? A week? Another week of videos? Yeah, that sounds about right. If you have missed some of the videos in our content advent calendar, you can go ahead and check those. There's been videos every day so far in December, so you can go ahead and check those on our channel is in a big playlist of all the content I've encountered the videos, which is very, very cool. It's like Tutorial Tuesday, but tutorial every single day. I will see you tomorrow. And as always, thanks for watching.